Hello there. The high-value manufacturing catapult achieved near-iconic status at the start of the pandemic when its then-CEO Dick Elsey led the manufacturing consortium that delivered on the ventilator challenge, producing nearly 14,000 of these vital machines for the NHS, even though everyone involved was working in isolation. It was an extraordinary effort made possible by brilliant engineering, Elsie's leadership, and of course the advanced digital manufacturing technologies that permitted such a wildly successful design collaboration and production to happen via remote control. Well, today I'm delighted to be joined by Dick Elsie's successor as CEO of the HVM Catapult, Catherine Bennett. Catherine joins us from the National Composite Centre near Bristol, one of the Catapult's seven national research centres. Catherine, welcome. Thank you very much, Nick. Pleased to be here. Now, you've just released the Catapult's annual report. It's clearly been a heck of a year for the high value manufacturing catapult? Well, it's been a year of roller coaster for everybody, but certainly for our catapults, we're really pleased about how the seven centres worked so hard, so diligently, and worked on many, many collaborative projects, um, which we include in our review, such as working on the ventilator challenge and some amazing work with PPE providers, who, and one of whom is now the biggest supplier of PPE to the NHS. In a matter of weeks, they ramped up their production. So quite astonishing, the results. And I'm very proud to, to hear the stories of what they've been working on. You've just mentioned the ventilator challenge, of course. That was a, an astonishing episode. But the catapult did more than the PPE and the ventilator challenge to aid in the national response to COVID. And I think it demonstrates the, the breadth of operations that you have uh, as part of the seven research centres of the catapult. Yes, of course, there's the outstanding work led by CPI up in Darlington, who were part of the Vaccines Task Force, again, who helped to ramp up the vaccine production at very short notice. And the connections and projects and collaboration experiences that the teams have learned through this experience will be super helpful for us in the future to come. Well, I was going to say, um, do you take for granted that the wider population, and perhaps even some in government, really understand why the catapult was uniquely positioned to deliver on this very vital action at a moment of national emergency. Well, it really brought to the fore the scope and breadth of all the capabilities in our centres. You know, we have 18, 18 sites around the UK and seven centres, all of which you have incredible capabilities and machinery. We have £800 million worth of machinery assets owned by our centres. But more importantly, Nick, going to your question, it's the, it's the skills, the capabilities, and also, finally, the convening, the collaboration that the, uh, the, the catapult can bring. And that's what really made sure that we were at the fore of bringing people together so quickly in light of this dreadful pandemic. Well, obviously, everything that has happened um, has added further to the catapult's political capital. What is your strategy now as the new CEO? What are you going to do with that political capital? How are you going to spend it? So we've just marked our 10 years of being in existence. I mean, some of the centres individually have been around for a lot longer, but certainly it's put our name on the map. Um, I maybe want to work hard to ensure that name on the map is in bold and underlined even more. And it's the stories that and the case studies that I've been learning about since I've been visiting the different centres since I joined eight weeks ago that's really helped me understand how I can communicate that better to government audiences and also also really importantly to the rest of industry. Now, you've just mentioned uh, the, the, the catapult has been sort of formally uh, in existence for 10 years, and it's grown from that small cluster of innovation and research centres into arguably one of the largest manufacturing uh, capabilities uh, in uh, or, or, or facilities in Europe. Um, and the report says, your annual review says that the catapult is a true agent of industrial transformation. What does industrial transformation mean to you 
and how does the catapult achieve it? Well, those are the two words that are really my mantra as part of uh, my, my time as CEO. It's good how we can ensure that the capabilities that we've developed, the people we have, the skills, the projects, the ability to convene people, all of that, we've got very high ambitions, can help transform the industrial landscape. So as you may know, um, the UK is currently about ninth in terms of world manufacturing capability, in terms of the ranking. We're here we are just as the Olympics are finished, so we're all about medal tables. And one of the things we want to do as part of our industrial transformation is help the UK reach and maybe move up a, move up a few slots to go up to maybe fifth. And so that's one of our ambitions. So what we're doing is building on the experience we've got amongst our different centres, working together more collaboratively. So there's seven centres at several different sites around the UK, but myself and the other CEOs of these centres, really it's all about working closer together. And that's maybe more an internal fact, but actually we want the outside world to see that if you come and knock on the door here at the NCC, you can also access the centres around the UK. And that's part of the spirit and ingenuity that we want to continue with. The annual report is very keen to point out the numbers of SME manufacturers you've worked with. Uh, it says that 56% of the nearly 6,000 companies uh, that the Catapult worked with were indeed SMEs. But actually, SMEs are 95% plus of the manufacturing sector. So actually, I would argue that seems quite low. Is it because the, the, the Catapult tends to be geared towards the needs of larger companies? Or do you think it's because SMEs are frankly unaware of all that the Catapult has to offer? I think the best way of answering that question, Nick, is to look at where we've come from. So we started, as you said earlier, by a series of smaller innovation centres, mainly clustered around universities. And that there's a sector expertise. Uh, one of the big mantras of the government at the moment is talking about place and levelling up. And actually, the catapult that is that writ large. And it's building up from that clustering that meant that, yes, larger companies were our partners, but also it meant that smaller companies, mid caps and also SMEs, can learn more about how partnerships between universities and yeah, academia and other industrial partners can work. But absolutely, there's a whole world out there of SMEs who have yes, yet to be reached by our catapult. And this is one of the reasons why I'm happy to talk to manufacturing today to ensure that SMEs know more about our capabilities. And we've got teams working in each one of our centres who are 100% focused on the SME dialogue. And we know that's the lifeblood of our industry. And we want to help those SMEs who may need help with um, putting business plans together, um, making sure they've got the right management skills, but also really importantly, learning how to turn their business perhaps to more digital manufacturing methodologies, learning more about different materials, and you know, just learning from each other. Because one of the things, as I said earlier, is that we can convene organisations together. A few moments ago, you mentioned the levelling up agenda of the government. Do you think manufacturing should be regarded as the spear point of that drive to level up the regions of the UK? Well, we absolutely tick the box of levelling up. We're based around the UK, up in Scotland, down here in Bristol, and of course in the Midlands extensively, and, and Darlington up in the North East. We have sites also in Liverpool, and I just read recently over the weekend that actually many parts of the North, the North West, are improving, productivity is improving, and you know manufacturing is absolutely a core part of that. We certainly can see that manufacturing and ensuring that people learn more about designing and making things is the future that we need to ensure the UK is strong at. But it's, we're all in this together. It's not just learning how to do manufacturing or how to do it better. It's also about having the right skills. And that's another part of the work that we're doing here at the Catapult to help ensure that different parts of the UK also can have access to the right skills and talent. A final point, uh, you join the HVM Catapult following a brilliant career at Airbus and before that at General Motors. How will your experiences at these very large companies inform your leadership of the Catapult? Well, I feel very lucky, actually. I, very early on in my career, I also worked for a short time in the nuclear industry. As you said, I worked in automotive and then latterly in aerospace. So these are three key sectors that are really important for the Catapult. Um, and I'm actually really enjoying, Nick, learning more about other sectors that I didn't know so much about. Um, construction, um, 
farmer, um, food and drink. So there's so many opportunities. But yes, I will bring hopefully a lot of the experience I've had in those other large international companies to bear to bring examples of, of good working practices. But actually, at the moment, I'm learning more from others uh, than I'm bringing. But I'm sure I'll be able to bring some of my experience in the next few weeks and months as I get to know everybody and learn more about the opportunities the Catapult can provide. Catherine, it's wonderful to see you uh, taking over the reins from Dick Elsie at the Catapult. All the very best of luck to you and the teams around the country. Thank you, Nick, and good luck with Manufacturing TV. Thanks very much, Catherine. Uh, this has been a special report from Manufacturing TV. I'm Nick Peters. Thanks for joining us. See you again soon.